YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been doing a series of videos about wild edible plants. Uh, I see these videos as more of being commercials for the plants as opposed to actual lessons in how to identify them. I think that plants kind of need commercials because there's no money in advertising these plants because they're just out there for free. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of a cheerleader, you know, go wild edibles, you know, get into it. Uh, in the intro to the series, I mentioned the importance of having a, a paper book, a paperback book or something like that you can bring out into the field to do the plant identification. I know that it's possible if someone made a really good video about plant identification to have a mobile device, you could bring that out with you, use your 4G network or whatever. Uh, to, to get that information, but I, I'm not a big fan of that. I, I think it's hard to see a video screen when you're outside in full sun. And uh, beyond that, we all know that when the aliens invade and drop the bird flu infected zombies, let's go to that clip. We know that they are going to precede that attack with an EMP pulse, uh, which would render the internet network and your device useless. So having a paperback book would be a, um, a welcome alternative to a dead mobile device. So this is the one, this is the book that I talked about in the intro that I use. Uh, I just alluded to it very briefly, and I want to spend some time today talking about why I think this is a great book. There is something in this book that I think is super valuable uh, that I haven't seen in a lot of other uh, plant identification books. I want to talk about that, uh, but I just want to go through the general structure of it to sort of demystify uh, and give you a sense of what you're going to find in a book like this. Now, uh, the book here, it's just, it's full of lots of full color pictures. There's some black and white stuff in here too. I don't know why it was like, you know, some black and white. It's like 95% color, 5% black and white. I don't know why they chose to do it that way, but it's an awesome book. On this page here, we have uh, Quickweed here at the top and uh, Bearberry down at the bottom and text relating to each of these things on the side here. Um, now I'm just going to look at the text related to the Quickweed uh, right off because this is something that's very common all over the place. Um, first off, it gives you the common names of it. Quickweed being one of them, and then it gives you the Latin name of it. Now, I, I never go into the Latin name that much, and in, to be honest, I don't even think the common name is really all that useful. Once once you know what plants are, you don't need to know what the hell they're called. You just see that thing on the ground, and you're like, well, that right there I can eat, or that's good for, you know, clotting blood, or, you know, whatever, you know, what you might want to do. Uh, it doesn't matter what the hell the thing's called, and whether you know the name of it. I mean, it's great for trivia and to, like, impress people, like, hey, man, this over here, this is... This is Galenosa Paravaforum. You know, I guess that's impressive to some people. And knowing the Latin name is useful if you want to compare uh, two different books' take on a plant. You wouldn't use the common name, you'd use the Latin name because it's just one Latin name for every plant. Some plants can have multiple common names, and some of the common names can be shared by multiple plants. So, uh, so the Latin name does have that use, but it really doesn't matter if you know it off of the top of your head or anything like that. What's important is that you see the plant, you know what it's good for, and you know you decide to use it. Uh, under here, uh, they talk about the habitat where this stuff lives. Quickweed lives in kind of uh, disturbed sites, things like that, cracks in roads. Uh, also, as a garden weed, I've got it in my garden growing right now. It's growing next to my potatoes, and, and the, the quickweed is doing much better than my potatoes are right now. They're being attacked by potato bugs, and I don't have the time to go and save them. Uh, talks a little bit about identification and, you know, the leaf structure, you know, whether they're furry leaves or smooth leaves, what the stem's like, what the flower's like, and you can kind of compare that back and forth between there and the picture. Uh, it talks a little bit about uh, how to harvest them. There's a, a harvest section for each one. You know, this just says take the young plants during the middle of the growing season. Then it talks about preparation, which I think is really useful because if you just pick them and never do anything with them, what's the point of it? So it says for quickweed, uh, discard the roots, boil the tops, for about 20 minutes and serve with salt and pepper or butter uh, or add more flavorful greens to compensate for quickweed's blandness. So that tells me, you know, this is not a particularly flavorful plant, but it's healthy, it's nutritious, and you can add it to your diet for more roughage and fiber and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it talks about related, related edible species. Uh, if there are, you know, other similar plants related to it, you know, it'll, it'll give you a heads up about that. And here is the, I don't, I don't want to say most important, but here's the, the thing I love about this book. Is right down here, it says poisonous lookalikes, and it does this for every plant in this whole book. Poisonous lookalikes, none. Now that's really useful because now I know if I see a plant that looks pretty much like that, I know that I don't have to be some kind of professional botanist to identify it. I just know if I find something that looks pretty much like that, I can eat it, and even if it's not exactly gallon, gallon, soga, whatever, uh, 
I'm not going to kill myself because there, there's nothing that looks like that that is poisonous. And I think that's so useful to just sort of free you up and give you a sense that you can experiment a little bit with that. Um, now, there are plants in here that when it says poisonous looks like, they say, yes, there are some, be careful. Uh, one of those is uh, daylilies. Uh, in the, before the flowers come up out of the daylily plant, uh, they look a lot like an iris plant, and an iris plant is, is you know, poisonous. So uh, what that tells you is the level of trepidation you need for whatever given situation you're facing. And for quite the majority of plants, you'll find that there are not poisonous lookalikes for them. Uh, blackberries, raspberries, that's another example. If you find something that pretty much looks like a blackberry plant or a raspberry plant, it may not exactly be technically a blackberry or a raspberry, but it's not going to kill you. There aren't any poisonous lookalikes for those types of things. And I think that's so useful uh, to, to have in there to just free you up to experiment a little bit. So this is a great book. I've had it through multiple uh, editions, Edible Wild Plants by Elias and Dykeman. If you want just one book to get you going, this one right here. I would really recommend grabbing this guy. Um, I take it with me everywhere. I've just got it in my backpack. And um, it's wonderful. I can't hi recommend it highly enough. I do want to talk about another book, though. This one here, Botany in a Day. This is the only other book I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it's by Thomas Elpel, and this is this is a really cool book. Now, I said you'd get by with the other one. That one's fine. This one is a different angle on getting into wild edible plants. Uh, what's cool about Elpel's book is that he doesn't get crazy all into trying to necessarily identify a specific plant. Now, you, you can do that with this book, but what this book is more about is trying to identify general family characteristics that are shared um, within groups of plants. Uh, it's full of lots of line art, black and white drawings, and I get, you know, you could poo-poo line art drawings, uh, but, you know, as opposed to photographs, but there is something to be said for line art drawings as well, you know, whereas a photograph just takes a picture of everything, every little detail, a line art drawing allows the artist to focus your attention on what's specific about that plant. So, in a way, for plant identification, line art drawings in that kind of way, have a bit of a leg up on photographs. Now, I'm not saying photographs are bad, they're great too, but, uh, but don't disregard line art drawings. I think they can be a really helpful way of identifying um, different plants. Now, uh, if you just start at the beginning of this book, uh, Elpel starts it off by uh, grabbing, I think it's like five, you know, five, six, seven or so, uh, basic families of plants that are really uh, prevalent, you're going to find all over the place, uh, and it gives you and these are really easy to identify. The first one he calls is the patterns of the mustard family. And he talks about the basic patterns, how many petals the flowers have, how many stamens they have, uh, you know, the, the seed structure and things like that. And once you learn those characteristics, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of plants that you can identify as mustard greens and know by virtue of being mustard greens that they're edible. Double check that. I think all mustard greens are edible. Double check that before you go eat <laughs> any mustard greens, though. I don't pick mustard greens that much because I think they taste like shit, but uh, I believe they're all edible. Uh, and it has keywords right here. Four petals, six stamens, four of them are tall and two of them are short. There you go, and that gets you going on the mustard green family. And w once you can identify that, you, you've taken care of hundreds of plants. You may not know what their actual name is, but you know the common attributes between all of those all of those plants. Next page he has here is the mint family. Now uh, the mint family has certain characteristics: square stalks, opposite leaves, and they're oftentimes aromatic. If you find those qualities in a plant, you've found a mint plant. You know, along with a couple other uh, a couple other basic things. But that opens up an enormous number of plants. Now uh, mint plants are you know your your. Uh, uh, Spearmint and your you know mint, classic mint, uh, but also your basil, oregano, plants like that, all mint family plants, and all mint family plants. Once you identify them, are edible. They may not taste very good, but they're all edible. They're not going to poison you. So just by learning just a couple key features of of this family of plants, all of a sudden, bang, you can identify hundreds and hundreds of things in your area. You may not know their names, but you'll know that you can eat them. So. This is a great book of getting really quickly into an enormous number of plants without having to, you know, get into this is specifically that, this plant, this is specifically that plant. He has the parsley family over here. You notice there's a little uh, skull and crossbones here because the, there are plants in the parsley family that are very, very 
poisonous. The parsley family obviously contains parsley, also uh, carrots and um, parsnips, things of that nature, but it also contains uh, poison hemlock, water hemlock, which are super, super toxic. I, I think what they used to, like, as Socrates' suicide drink, didn't he drink of the hemlock? <laughs> or something. So you know if you're dealing with the uh, the parsley family, you got to be careful. You gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. I oftentimes stay away from the parsley family actually because I'm uh, I'm not I'm not that well versed in a lot of it, and uh, and they can be pretty dangerous. Uh, they have the, the pea family of plants here, lily family, and we can you know go through all these. There there are some pea plants. Obviously, they're edible peas. Uh, there are also pea family plants that are are, are are toxic. But once you learn these basic family characteristics. There are thousands and thousands of plants that you can begin consuming or th and other, pl um, other plants that you know you need to be a little bit careful of. And you can learn an enormous, um, you can learn a little bit about an enormous number of plants, but enough to get you going. So I think that Botany in a Day by Thomas Elpel is a great addition, uh, is kind of like a, a different way of coming at, uh, at plant identification. So as usual, I know I've been very long-winded. I know it's not for everybody, but if you're still with me, uh, thank you for listening. I hope that I can share my enthusiasm for going out there and just finding wild edibles on the ground. I think so much of prepping is all about... Uh, you know, buying shit. You know, I, when I when I get my my bonus check in, I'm I'm you know I've got this whole my prepping arsenal. I, I need to buy this. I need to buy that. But so much about being prepared, so much about being self sufficient is just free, for the taking all around us. And wild edible plants are one of those things. And I hope that I can share my enthusiasm uh, with you for them. It does not take an enormous amount of uh, education about these things. Just learning a few basic things can get you started even with just a couple basic plants, and then you can grow from there. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.